Grab your mullets, Wargamers, because today we are MacGyvering some stuff up. What you're looking at is one complete kind of Seven Years' War army, painted up to represent kind of Austrians. Now, let me walk you through the whole process first. Let me introduce you to the army, and then we'll do a little bit of explanations about why I'm saying kind of, kind of a lot. Uh, first of all, what we've got here is essentially 18 regiments of foot, four regiments of heavy foot, and by way of explanation, you can see if I tilt this up that the regular foot is separated. You've got two uh, column bases of troops. The heavy foot has more narrow columns that are mushed together, so you've got one big block of infantry, whereas with your regular foot, you've got that little bit of separation between these two fellas here. Uh, in the front, we've got two stands of skirmishers, the lightest foot of all. And then in the very front, of course, are our generals. I've got three stands of generals. As you can see from the ruler, each of the stands is a one-inch stand. Over here, we've got two different kinds of horses. In the front, you've got light cavalry who are distinguished by the fact that they're, once again, there's a little bit of separation here, showing that they're a little more flexible. And then the giant six in the back are just heavy blocks of heavy cavalry in attack formation. On the far side, we've got Chicken Joe, a 15 millimeter figure who is there for scale. And in front of him are three units of cannons. We'll look at these in a little more detail in just a minute. I'll bring them closer once I can get the focus proper, but I'll, before we look at them that close, let me explain that essentially each base represents about one regiment. We're coming out of the Pike and Shot era, and that means that the backbone of our army is going to be infantry. And we'll start, as I said, with just the basic foot. And I've got a little paintbrush here for pointers. You can see a little more detail on these guys. Each of these blocks is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And there's three rows of them. So you're looking at 36 figures or 72 on the individual base. Now, depending on the numbers you go with, a regiment at the time, and this is essentially interwar inter years, kind of between the Seven Years' War and Napoleonics. The rule set I'm using is Napoleonics. I'm tweaking it to kind of scale it back a little bit, not all the way back to Seven Years' War, but either way, you're, the, the Austrians tended to use regiments anywhere from... 500 to 1,000, depending on whose numbers you use, and depending on a whole lot of other things. You know, on paper, the regiment might have been 720, and let's just call it 720 people in a regiment taking the field, because that makes the math really easy. We've got 72 figures. Each little dot is a dude, so at a 1 to 10, you're looking at a regiment of 720 people. Really, I think for the Austrians, it was probably closer to 600 based on my reading, but eh, whatever. So, one regiment, one inch, we are good to go. One of the reasons I like this basing, uh, as you can see, I went with just a nice old school that is just sand, glued down, and then painted over with a couple of different successions of dark green and dry brushed with a little bit of, uh, excuse me, green, light green, and then a little bit of yellow on top. The varnish that I used came out a little bit cloudy. Not entirely happy with that. I need to go a little lighter next time, but man, it's holding that sand down tight. Kind of punch it up a little bit. Of course, we've got some some bushes, and you can kind of see in the back there's some bushes on all of these guys, just to add a little bit more visual interest. Uh, what else can I tell you? You know, these guys... So, now, w once again, the moving back to the fact that these are, quote, Austrians... I have got five full armies that I need to paint, and you need to be able to see at a distance which of these bases belongs to which army. So from a gaming standpoint, just pure practicality, I decided that I'm going to paint all of my Austrians yellow, all of my Russians green, all of my British red, there are the red coats of course, all of my Prussians in a dark gray, hopefully black, and my French in a blue. Now, the purists might say, you know, not all of the Austrians had 
yellow surcoats with with white pants to which i say i understand and of course you know if you wanted to you could paint these up you could buy enough stands to do a one to ten army and paint each regiment in different colors reflecting the regiment that you want to model i'm not modeling a specific heavy cavalry unit here i'm just modeling heavy cav I did a couple of things to help this track as heavy cav. Of course, the horses are in a lot of different colors. Uh, again, these flags here are red just to give them a little splash of color so that they would stand out. And here, even out of focus, you can see where those flags are in each of these units. They jump right out. Yellow, white, with a little bit of red. I went with the McDonald's color scheme for these Austrians, and I think it turned out pretty well. Particularly, and here we'll look at this. We'll look at this light cavalry. You see, they're a little bit more spread out. The flags are a little different for each guy, but again, they're in red. And you can see here, the rocks. I painted just a handful of the larger sand grains, as though they are larger boulders. And it turned out reasonably well. I think my ratios are pretty good. We've got a lot of foot. It's about a four to one heavy foot to regular foot just a couple of light infantry now i know that perhaps the track tactic was to have skirmishers out in front of the blocks but for the game rules that we're using and for the sake of you know having lightweight units that can secure trees this is going to work out just fine and dandy let's also take a look at these cannons here the army pack comes with one baggage train, and let me spin this around so you can see. Look, it says artillery, just in case you can't see what's on it. And what you've got here is a team of four horses with a largely empty wagon. And if we turn this straight on, there you can see the flash of silver on the cannons, and one, two, three cannoneers, plus a guy who's leaning forward to light it. It's very hard to make out, but the sculpt does. This little rock right here is actually a fire pot or fire pit so that he, so that Drummer Hoff here can fire it off. And we've got three cannons. Now, the rule set that I've opted to use for the campaign that I'm going to be running, as I said, is a Napoleonic's rule set. And that particular rule set allows for both horse artillery and foot artillery. The horse artillery, of course, were hooked up to limbers, and they could race around and secure a patch of ground and set up and immediately start cannonading the enemy. Frankly, I didn't get enough because I ordered the Seven Years War pack. I might not be using the right set of rules. So what I did is I just flat out declared, look, we're just using the foot artillery. These things are slow, but they're powerful, and it's going to work out great for using a slightly more advanced time-wise a Napoleonic's rule set for the Seven Years War. I think otherwise it's going to work out just fine. The bases I bought on Amazon, these are some of the cheapest bases you'll find, and that's why I bought them. Uh, I want to say you get 200 for 10 bucks, and good luck finding anything that cheap from the hobby sites. They get a nice, you know, beveled, rounded corner. They're fantastic. My only real concern is they're unvarnished, so the termites might get to them and wreck things, but that's not such a big deal. The last unit that we need to look at here is, of course, the Generals. And I have three stands of headquarters. It doesn't make a difference which one is which. They're all about the same. And again, you've got that nice white on, yellow on, what would it be, yellow on white? No, white on yellow uniforms. A little splash of red to show you that there is a standard bearer there. And it's got just a handful of guys. So it's not just the lead general. It's also maybe a couple of messengers, you know, his, his immediate support staff. And there you have it. A full army, I want to call it a core, 36 stands, each one inch in size. One of the other things I like about this setup, let me clear some space out of the, out of the way here. If we grab four of these infantry, now the rules I'm using, this won't happen, but you could easily, if you wanted to use a different set of rules, uh, you could go ahead and throw these down, two by three, and look at that. If you've got a set of rules that requires six figures, instead of using big boys like old Chicken Joe here, 
mounted six to a two inch by three inch base or eight or what have you, I now have a two by three inch maneuver unit. Not only that, but if I'm using a rule set that, that uses, that uh, if you use, if you mount your army this way for Napoleonic army, and I'm not sure, you'll have to forgive me, but if you wanted to show that these guys are, okay, so here they are in a line, giddy up, you can put them in attack formation, or march formation, or you could even spin them around, and hey, look at that, now you've got a square of troops. So you can even show different formations. The, the, the core level rule set that I'm using not an issue. It assumes that the individual commanders of a regiment know what they're doing. And again, here we have these guys are foot. And that they will use the right formation for the task at hand. One last thing I should point out. I've mentioned this before. Note that the flags are in front. That's one way to tell which way this base is facing. Of course, I've got the label on the back edge. But also, see how there's a nice clean field in front of these guys? The reason for that field is that in the Seven Years' War era, the goal was not to get stuck in and get involved in hand-to-hand -hand combat. They trusted the muskets far more. I don't even know if they had a whole lot of use for um, bayonets at the time. But the big thing is, back in the day, you would wake up, and you'd march out to battle. Hey, we think the enemy's somewhere over there. And you'd dress up your lines, and the sergeants would make you all nice and pretty. And you'd you'd march from wherever you would camp off to where the suspected battlefield is, and you'd get set up, and, and there's the enemy way over there, and I wonder if today's the day we're really going to fight. And then somebody starts, and a horn blows, and somebody behind you yells, and the sergeant says, get moving, you, you punks. And so you start... You start your marching, and maybe there's trees and stuff, and you keep your lines dressed, and then they start shooting at you. And then the sergeant says, hey, just point at those guys. You know, maybe they're 100 yards away now, so you can see the, see the buttons on their, on their coats. And he says, fire. And so you, you fire your gun, and it's going to be really accurate because you're all ready to go. And now guys are fighting to reload, and, and things are getting a little tense because there's wasps buzzing by, and each one of those wasps is a... Uh, is a lead shot looking to take your life. And so you, your fingers start shaking and you start trembling because the balloon has gone up. You've seen the elephant and the guy next to you drops his ramrod. And now it, they say fire and you got a fire. And so you pull the trigger and you blast away. And there's a big cloud of smoke and then nobody can see anything. And the drill sergeant's smacking you and saying, you got to reload, you got to reload. And the other guy next to you over here, he took a round that took off half his skull. And so it devolves into uh, you kind of freeze up and what winds up happening is that first volley is very effective and that's what this little pipe cleaner is for it represents the smoke of fire and the of gunfire and gunpowder and so when the enemy's out there somewhere you're going to be a lot less effective and in the rule set that i'm using two by two napoleonics when the general shows up or the headquarters the hq unit slaps you back into shape, you can remove that. And now you can go off marching because you've gotten whipped into shape by the general. So you can march off again until you take that next first shot. Kablamo! And now you are pinned. So all you can do is kind of look around and shoot at whatever comes near you. But that's all you can do until you're rallied again. Unfortunately, the enemy has a vote. And if they shoot you and they do some effect, then you become disorganized. And then... This son of a gun goes like that. And when you see the smoke coming up, it's like a World War II tank has brewed up. That tells you that this unit is disorganized. And of course, if he takes one more, quote, damage, then you'll just remove it. Or he'll just turn around and skedaddle. But that's really the reason why I pushed these two stands back on the base. So that I would have room to show the smoke of gunfire and what's really nice is the same thing i'm not you know i off the top of my head i can't remember i haven't played it yet because i only have one army but you can also do the same thing with these guys where that just tucks in there nice Oop. 
There we go. Tucks in there nice. You got room in front. You're off to the races. And, of course, with your cannons, likewise, you drop that. You can even drop it in front if you wanted to. They don't have quite as much room. And I guess we could turn them around to show you that these cannons have fired. And that's really all there is to it. One last thing I'll show you. Now, I usually don't like to do this. One last thing that might be fun to look at here is the next army that I'm painting. And that is Russians. And for the Russians, I've gone with green coats and... What color are their pants? Let's take a look. This is how I paint these guys. Oh, red, of course. So here are the Russians. And at a distance, you can see they track as very green. They track... As, and as I said, look, they're they're not done. Okay, it's still a little, still a little bit manky, as they say, uh, a little darker in color. But I think the red, once I get them all based up and nice and neat, that red's really going to pop out. Of course, the flags. I haven't quite decided what color to paint the flags, but they should look just as nice as this. And when you put them down on the table, it should be really obvious which which is which. Now you can see, you, know, you can see that the Austrian units. I'll bring these a little closer so you can compare the two directly. This foot unit is a lot bigger than this one. What did we say? This has 36. I think this has... Is that right? Did we say 36? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm sorry, I miscounted. I, I, I lost one in there somewhere. 40, 80, whereas this guy only has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you're looking at 30 on this one and almost 40 on that one. Bigger units here, which may not be historically accurate, but it will by the time we're done, because I'm planning on putting, if memory serves, I might actually be putting three of these down. So now you're looking at 90 guys on a single base compared to the 80 for the Austrians, which makes a little more sense. If if memory serves, I might be wrong on this, and if I am, I'm trusting you historical guys to set me straight, but the Russians made far more use of the large units. In fact, 2x2 two two Napoleonics has an allowance for that, which we will be taking advantage of, even though we're not doing Napoleonics, even though we're not doing Seven Years War even, we're doing Imaginations which is, if you're familiar with the kind of Ruritania uh, style of not quite historical, it's, it's, it's a, a semi-historical. Go check out the Trojan War, what is it, trojanwar.blogspot.com, link, link in the description uh, to learn a little bit more about that. But the big thing here is I wanted to show you that Two millimeters, amazing, and it's late in the game. These are all irregular miniatures figures. Uh, here, we can do one last little comparison. So the heavy infantry that I have for the Austrians it uses the same size blocks. When you order an army pack, it comes with a mix of the smaller blocks and the larger blocks. And, of course, the Russians wouldn't be the Russians if they didn't have... The Cossacks. The fuzzy Cossacks. There we go. There's the Cossacks with the big with the big black headdresses. And the nice pale horses, which I did for a reason, but we'll have to talk about that reason later. Oh, red pants, green top. If you're a psychopath, you could always go in there and just put a little dot. And I've seen guys online that put a little dot of white for the faces, but I think the pale that you see there looks just fine. In an upcoming video, I promise, I will be showing you exactly how to paint these guys. But it's not a murder mystery. I'm not trying to fool anybody here. Just so you know, there isn't anything that you do on a 15mm figure that can't also be applied here. We're all impressionists when we paint for miniature war games. And there's just, you use the exact same set of tricks to lend the impression of blocks of troops. Same tricks. Washes, inks dry brush. That's all I've done here. Easy peasy, that lemon is squeezy. And that 
about wraps it up for today's walkthrough of a two millimeter seven years war core painted up in kind of austrian colors take this run with it at your own table and you'll be doing great and when you do you know what's going to be going on in the background your old pals at the joy of wargaming are going to be praying for you